My name is Daniel Geis. I'm the Creative and Technical Director at ED Films, and today we're going to take a look at some of my favorite stuff on the ED Films store, and that is the animated assets. We've been creating these things for years and using them on every single one of our projects to add a little extra life to each scene. They usually involve natural elements like grass, smoke, fog, flowers, plants, typically things that can be really difficult and time-consuming to animate by hand. They're all made to be very flexible, and I'm going to show you in just a few steps how you can modify them and use them in different ways to customize the look so it fits your project better. All right, so I've previously recorded some workflows here, and we're just going to review them. I'm dragging in this grassy patch from one of the animated asset packs. I use this one a lot. These ones are really good because they actually loop well, because they start out static and then the wind gusts up. So you can kind of use different sections as you want. So what I'm going to do is actually use the alpha channel of this grass to cut out this paper. So I can kind of make a papery looking grass. Um, so we'll just do this and run sort of the track mat through it. There we go. And so you can see that now I can just see the paper. And the next thing I want to do is I want to change the contrast of the paper so we can see a little more detail in it. And I'm just using curves on this. You can do this however, however way you want. The next thing I need to do is I need to go to the mat and do a simple choker. And if I actually put in a negative number, it will expand the mat around the alpha. So you can see I got a lot thicker grass pieces there. And that gives us a lot more to work with. It wouldn't look good if we just had the grass image itself, but it looks pretty good with the silhouette. So next you can see in the effects panel that I've added a rough and edges. And I'm doing this to break up the edge a little bit and give something a little more characteristically paper. I've also alt clicked on the evolution and I put a time times 200 on it. And that'll kind of make the edges evolve over time. Additionally, I'm putting a posturized time on an adjustment layer. That's to get it at eight frames per second. So it's a little more handmade looking, a little less CG. And then on the paper itself, on the rotation value, I'm adding a wiggle. Now this wiggle is going to make the paper spin around back and forth. And because it's under the adjustment layer where the posturized time's on, it's not going to look like it's just spinning. It might look like boiling paper. If I duplicate it and make the other one a little less opaque, I can now blend them together and have something a lot more random looking, and I get a pretty nice texture boil. Additionally, I'm going to change the blend mode to a multiply, and I'm actually going to add a solid with some color to it so that I can make this grass uh, you know, stand out against the gray. So I'll just put this to a color burn. I uh, started with a multiply, but then we go to color burn here, and then I have to turn it more gray because color burn is really intense. So if I press Control shift y I can adjust the solids properties. So I'm just going to bring it over here. I mean, this isn't beautiful, but I'm just testing. I just want to kind of show you what you can do. Now, once you've done that, you can actually bring in duplicates of the composition or repeat this process with other pieces of grass, like I've done here, and start getting some really cool variety. You can just duplicate the composition and drag new pieces in. And additionally, you can add layer styles. So here I've added some a gradient layer style, and that's so that I can make the grass fade off from dark to light, which gives it a little more depth, makes it a little bit more interesting to look at, and gives it just a little more variety. And then I can copy that layer style and paste it onto the other one. Now here what I'm doing is I'm going gone into one of the grass clips and I'm just adding more layers of grass. And this is to just thicken it up and give it a little more density now that we kind of know what we're doing. And after I've done that, you can see that I've got something kind of interesting happening. I mean, it doesn't look beautiful yet, but it's definitely interesting. It might be a really good effect for what you're looking for. All right, so this one here, I've taken some grass in, and I'm putting it over a brown paper type thing and doing a color burn pass on it. And with this one, I'm using the simple choker, expanding things out a little bit. I'm going to adjust the color balance. I kind of want it to look like an old-fashioned illustration or like a sepia ink painting or something. So I'm just flattening it out, and on the adjustment layer here, I'm trying to add some tune effects. I'm trying to see if I can make it look a little bit more hand-painted. But what I ended up doing is I ended up using one of the Universe Legacy plugins for the paint effects, so it's kind of got a watercolory feel to it. So I think that's a pretty good start. You could achieve that in other ways. Um, maybe by using the Median filter can do that. And now I'm adding in another layer to it. So I'm taking in all kinds of different grass patches, flipping them around, mixing them together, offsetting them. I'm really brightening them up in the background there so I can get a good contrast between the layers. You see that sort of creates that watery feeling. So there, we're starting to get some variety. I can just kind of pop it over like that. It looks pretty good, actually. So let's just render it out really quick. There we go, and move this down here. There you go. 
So it's it's again it's another look all together. This could could go really far into adding a lot of nice rich detail to your film or like a, some kind of animated card. Really any kind of thing you're doing. Uh, another approach here is to actually use the mosaic filter combined with some layer effects to create gradients. And this is what I did for Brown Bear, and I used it on the grass elements themselves. So by using the mosaic filter, I'm able to make the grass look pixelated. So it kind of looks like pixel art and blends really nice into this project here. Okay, so next up is an illustration where I'm trying to take something that was painted in Photoshop using some of our grass brushes and bring in some animated elements to bring it to life. And I'll probably rig up this character and animate him as well. But what I've done is I've taken the painted layers here, as you can see, that were painted on a paper texture and I've brought in a solid color paper to go underneath it so that I can use the grass as an alpha mat to cut out the paper. So I'm just pulling in these elements positioning them, kind of trying to match them as close as I can, but I don't want to be too particular about it. It's never going to be exact. I just want to flesh this out a little bit. Now you could probably just combine it with the two elements if you really wanted to, but this is kind of working backwards from something that was never intended to be animated. So just I've got, as you can see, I've got a pretty big variety of grasses here to achieve the look we're going for. Once I'm happy with how everything's positioned and I've brought in all the elements I want, I can combine them with the green paper layer that I saved earlier from Photoshop and use the paper as a track mat. And that will make it look a lot more like the original illustration. Additionally, I'll do the simple choker at negative four or something to expand the edges and add a rough and edges onto it to kind of give it a little bit of a looser feel. Another thing you can do is actually use the puppet tool on some of the animated asset layers and just bend them around so that they fit to the hills or shapes that you want. This can be really effective. If it's not working, you can actually create a layer mask or a mask on top of it and use the puppet tool to deform that instead of the layer itself. Um, here I'm just adding some of the ferns. I could throw in some flowers. I'm just building a couple of more layers using the same technique. I'm referencing the original Photoshop layer. You can see I can just reposition things. I put a layer mask underneath here with a solid so that I can blend the grass in with a full piece of paper. So once I'm happy with all the layers, I'll add a camera and I'll start spacing everything apart on the z-axis. So you can see I've kind of pushed everything apart. And now I'm bringing in another asset, which this one's not animated, but this is a collection of hand-painted clouds and fogs that you can use to add some atmosphere to your scenes. The asset pack comes with an After Effects template that shows you how you can use deformers and distortions to make the fog move and feel a little more dynamic. I've also included some templates that show you how to create depth lighting and some pretty convincing snow and rain clouds, but we're not gonna be using it for this shot. Mostly we're just going to be tinting them and then animating them a little bit to give some extra movement and depth to the scene. I actually use these fog layers quite a bit and with just these 11 layers out of generally low opacity and just offset a bit and flipped over, you can get a lot of variety and quite a bit of density to create some really believable fog. Just a quick diversion away from the fog. If you're using a lot of animated assets, one way to speed up the workflow so that things aren't so slow when doing your RAM previews is to put a time remap on each of the animated assets layers, like Control-Alt-T will enable time remapping, and then just go to the end keyframe and delete it. So you're only showing one frame of the animated element. And what that will do is speed up the render so that it's not so slow to get the sense of how your camera's moving through those assets. And then once you've, you're happy with your camera, you can turn off the time remapping and watch your your clip with all of the clips actually animated and moving. In this painting, I had a little bit of an orange area that I used to paint some light. So what I decided to do is duplicate it out a few times and put it in between a few layers to add a bit more depth to the scene that I could then mix in and rescale to make the light seem a little bit thicker. And lastly, I'm adding some of our falling leaves animated assets. This is just to give a, a little bit of movement into the background to make it feel like some leaves are obviously falling. And what I'm adding here is a fill effect and using the that to push the leaf color to the same color as the background trees. And then I made one for the foreground and pushed it to the same color as the foreground. So you can see all the elements at play here together. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird format because it's vertical. So it's kind of the worst demo for a video like this, but you can kind of see everything moving. We added some animation on the character and some post effects and stuff, but here's a close up. You can see everything's moving fairly subtly. I didn't want it looking like a blizzard. So I picked certain parts of the animation that didn't move too much. But you can see there's some, a really nice amount of movement, I think, that brings a lot of life to the shot. Here's the middle area here. You can see I would pay attention to those background bush areas behind the character. Just a subtle amount of movement making the whole scene feel alive. 
Okay, and then up here you can see all the tree leaves that we stacked together and moving quite nicely. I'd like to also mention that as I went further back, I reduced the frame rate on each of the layers. So the grasses in the foreground were at 12 frames per second, um, things in the midground were at 10 frames per second, and things in the very far background were at 8 frames per second. So maybe you can pick through the shot frame by frame and sort of see the different mixes of frame rates that we have going on there. Okay, great. I think that about wraps this one up. I hope there was some useful information in there. Even if you're not interested in picking up the animated assets, maybe there's something in there you can use in your own projects. If you are interested in picking up some of the animated assets or anything else on the store, you can check it out in the link down below. We've already seen some pretty awesome stuff that others have done with the animated assets, and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. All right, I'll see you in the next video.